morning. Um, so I've been watching the group all week and I've been seeing at what everyone's posting and what's happening with their bread. And I've been going through and trying to answer in the comments all of the questions that come in. But I thought I would just do a quick live. Um, today I've got the luxury of a nice lazy Sunday. I'm hanging around. Um, I'm going to be able to watch my dough. Um, the number one reason that your bread doesn't work almost always is because it didn't proof properly. So in the description of this video, I've linked to our Facebook page that we've set up and all of the tutorials that we've built are there. And the tutorials on the Facebook page are geared towards beginners. They're lower hydration, they're easy to manage, they're broken down step by step. And then I've also linked to the two YouTube videos that I've got. One is the beginner bread recipe, beginning to end, it's a long video. And then the other one is the beginner bread recipe, just sort of condensed into a shorter video and uh, walked through with a voiceover. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the last stretch and fold on my bread, and then I'm gonna show you how I set it up to bulk proof successfully. And if you follow these steps and you do this with your dough, um, and you pay attention, then you're more likely to have success faster with a lot less fails. Um, so I've mixed 120 grams of active starter with 680 grams of water and blended them together with a whisk. And then I've added 1,000 grams of flour and 20 grams of salt. I mixed them up, I let them sit for 30 minutes, I did a stretch and fold, and then I waited 30 minutes, did a second stretch and fold, 30 more minutes and a third stretch and fold. Now I'm just gonna do the last stretch and fold and I'm gonna separate my dough into clear, -sided, clear straight sided containers. So these are just standard containers that you can pick up at any grocery store or Walmart or whatever store you've got. And what these are gonna do is these are gonna allow me to watch the height of my dough. I usually let my dough double, well, People say let it double, but I actually let it grow to about 75% of doubled. So after this final stretch and fold, and I'll show you how your dough should look as well, we'll get it into these containers and then I'll just use a Sharpie like this and I'll mark its height, I'll put its lid on and I'm gonna watch it all day. So I do recommend when you're a beginner, try to find a day when you're gonna be there all day and you can keep an eye on your dough and watch it and see the process and see how it's going. Um, and just remember to feed your starter, you know, either the night before if you're gonna bake in the morning or somewhere around six to 12 hours before you know you're gonna be ready to bake and able to focus. So let's just take a look at the dough. Um, I've actually got two doughs mixed. And the beginner bread recipe makes two approximately 900 gram loaves. So I'm gonna end up having four loaves when I'm done. I'll bake one today right before supper, and then I'll bake the, or sorry, two loaves right before supper, and then I'll put the other two loaves in the fridge to cold proof until tomorrow morning or the next day. So this dough, as you can see, is quite strong now. It's very shiny and very smooth. There's no, you know, lumps of flour, nothing like that. So I'm just gonna do the final stretch and fold. So I'm just gonna get my hand a little bit wet. I'm gonna reach under the dough and I'm gonna pull it up and fold it down over top of itself. And people say, you know, northwest, southeast, go all the way around. So I'm just gonna work my way all the way around the four sides of the dough. So when you look at my dough, you'll see it actually really holds together. Let's get this little piece here. So it's it's got some real strength in it. There's, there's something called the window pane effect. So what you can do is you can take your dough and you can gently, of course, I mean, if you force it, it's going to rip, but you can start to stretch it and it's hard to see, but it starts to get translucent. It's nice and soft it holds together. So if you've done three or four stretch and folds, it's looking shiny, it's looking strong, it's holding together, but you wanna just have one more you know, reassurance that it's good to go, you can do the window pane effect. Here it is. Maybe I'll make a video soon of that nice and close up. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my scale. I'm gonna quickly weigh this dough, see what the total is, divide it by two, and separate it into these two containers. So. This dough is coming in at exactly 1,800 grams. So I'm gonna make two 900 gram loaves. And just keep your hands nice and moist. And you can use a knife or a bench scraper. You can place it down on the counter, whatever works for you. I'm just gonna take my dough and rip it in half. And we talked about strength, right? So it should be a little bit difficult to pull that out, to get it to separate. So I'll just weigh this one. So this one's exactly 900 grams. That means that this one's gonna be exactly 900 grams too. Once I get them into the container, what I'll do is just another loose stretch and fold. Just because I've, I've ripped them, I've sort of disturbed the dough, I'm just gonna make sure it's all holding together again. So just a quick stretch and fold. There we go. And then I'm just gonna take my hands and I'm gonna push the dough nice and flat as much as I can. I mean, it's very elastic. It wants to sort of bulk up and hold together, but I'm just, as much as I can, going to push this dough down into this container. And then I'm gonna repeat with the other one. my hands. So I've got my dough pushed into these containers and I'm going to pop covers on them. So I broke the lid to one of these. So put the lid on one. And then all I do for this other one is just take some plastic wrap. Cover it and then I use an elastic. My stepdaughter made me this. It was supposed to be a necklace, but it was really strangling me and I couldn't imagine what I was gonna use it for. And then I started sourdough and I was super excited because now I get to use it every day and it reminds me of her. Okay, so this dough is ready to bulk proof. My house is 72 degrees. Um, usually my dough takes around four hours to double, five. I'm going to be here all day, so I'm just going to start looking at it. I'm going to go, you know, run some errands and do some work today. And then about two hours from now, I'm gonna to start to watch it. And then once it's gotten to that 75% doubled, I'm gonna be good to go. So I'll just show you what I do with the container. So if you look, you can see the dough, it's not touching everywhere. It's kind of all different heights and bumpy and everything else. So I'll just take my marker. Here we go. And I'll mark the height of the dough. And where there's voids, where the dough isn't touching, I won't mark. So I'll go like this. And then I'll come over here. So now I've got an idea of where I've started. Later today, when I look at this dough, it's going to have risen past that height that I've marked with my marker. And then I'm going to be able to really accurately see how much it's proofed. And when we see these posts on the group that, that show these like breads that didn't rise at all, they're very thin, or these ones that did rise, but they've got huge holes in them. This is under or over proofing. And the only way to really know if your bread is proofed properly is to be able to see it. Over time, you start to get experience. Over time, you start to understand not only how to be really good at sourdough, but also 
what your environment is, what your mix is, how it acts, everything else. Like you might know that, oh, well, when I mix a whole wheat loaf, that one's going to take this long, whereas a spelt loaf might take this long and a bread flour loaf might take that long. But the point as a beginner is to first get, get all of the steps down. So if you do this and you follow this step, I promise you, you're going to see much more success. So same thing. Now, the nice thing about having multiple loaves is even if one, you know, looks kind of wonky and you're not sure, if you've got four of them all rising at the same time, you can look at them all and see how they are. So that's it. I just wanted to go over this and hopefully it can help some of you with proofing. Um, like I said, in the description of this video, I put a link to our sister page for the group that has all of our tutorials on it. And I also put links to the beginner recipe step by step. So enjoy making your bread. And um, thanks everyone for being in this group. It's really fantastic. Everyone's really, you know, active and talking and um, I know there's lots of you who don't make posts, but who are just watching and, and we're having a lot of fun with it. Talk to you soon.